I'd like to welcome yeah, everyone to the City of Brentwood Planning and Zoning Commission meeting on May 14th, 2014. If you'll please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call, please. Rich Obertino. Here. Jake McDowell. Here. John Nerberger is here. Dan Golowski. Here. Jennifer Hansen. Here. David Dimmitt. Here. David Plepka. Here. Clint Lewis. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nuremberger. I have, I'm going to place my clicky pen in my sport code right now because Mr. McCarthy has indicated we have an issue with commissioners and frankly board of aldermen members that have a tendency to click their pens and apparently doesn't come through very well on the video and the audio so if you oh, it all comes through very well. <laughs> it comes through too well so if you could please refrain from doing that I'll, I'll, i think i have a tendency to do that too so I'll, I'll do my best to avoid doing that has everybody had an opportunity to review the april 9th 2014 meeting minutes yes. are there any suggested revisions Seeing none, they'll stand as approved. We have three items for old business tonight. Uh, the first two are very similar, and the first two you've seen several times and have debated exhaustively, and they pertain to the flood hazard control regulations and proposed amendments to Chapter 25, Article 6, Division 8. Now, you may recall that at the end of the last meeting, after probably two hours of debate on this issue, uh, frankly, I believe, my understanding was that at the outset of the debate, the consensus was to pass those revisions that were necessary to maintain our eligibility for the National Flood Insurance Program, but there was a big debate and, frankly, some controversy as to the definitions of substantial damage and substantial improvement. And you'll recall that at the end of the day, the motion uh, that was made to approve the petition in its entirety, including those two definition changes, was rejected soundly. Um, Mr. Wise, could you please review for the commission why it is necessary, frankly, for the commission to revisit those proposed revisions to Chapter 25 that don't <coughs> include the two definition proposals? So the, these change, changes are, uh, as you mentioned, they are the minimum requirements that FEMA sets for us to have eligibility in the National Flood Insurance Program. Uh, if we were to not pass and adopt these in, in resulting in a compliant ordinance, uh, FEMA could essentially remove the city's participation in the National Flood, Flood Insurance Program, and the results of that would be that anybody that had a federally backed mortgage would not be able to get flood insurance and it would make uh, buying and selling property in the floodplain in the city of Brentwood extremely difficult. Um, and, and as far as the protection for those homeowners and those business owners that own existing structures that do have existing policies, they would not be able to retain those policies and they would lose that safety net of the flood insurance. And Mr. Wise, a couple clarification questions, but the revisions other than, and we're not talking about the first petition on the agenda tonight are all of the changes except <coughs> for those two definition changes, substantial damage and substantial improvement uh, definitions. Those two definitions are optional. The city would not need to adopt those in order to remain eligible for the National Flood Insurance Program. That is correct. Bill number one contains all of the changes necessary to maintain eligibility for the program, but does not include those two definitions, correct? Correct. And the changes that are present in bill number one are simply clarification changes, correct? Correct. And those they're, do not change updates. existing policy. That is correct. If these were put into place tomorrow morning, nothing on the administration side would change. Uh, it, it's simply... Um, clarifying the current flood insurance rate maps, uh, map panel numbers, and then clarifying the intention of, of an existing section. Uh, the language does not change, just the structure of how that paragraph for the recreational vehicles is modified. So my understanding of the, and we kind of got tripped up on Robert's rules, frankly, at the end of uh, the last meeting, but my understanding of the consensus of this commission was, in fact, to approve 
all of the changes except for the definitions of substantial damage and substantial improvement, which I think were soundly rejected by this commission. I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, so if that's not the case, please advise. But if that is the case, I'd suggest that we're set to move and, and we are ready for a motion, unless there's any discussion from commission members. Mr. Please. Chairman, I would make a motion that uh, we accept, um, number one, the petition listed as number one under old business and um, that we uh, adopt the changes to meet minimum NFIP requirements. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve item one on old business. And again, that is the petition to make these changes, but not the substantial <coughs> damage and substantial improvement uh, changes. Is there any further discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Just for, yep. do you want to open it up at all for? Well, I did. I, I think Colin, we, Colin? sure, we laid out what the, the backdrop is here. And is there any audience member that would like to address the commission then? Mercifully brief. Um, Gene Holtzman with Hudkin Development Company, although you probably know that by now. Um, I do think you're right. We have addressed all the fundamental issues, and I think they're very clear. And so just a brief sum up, which is that we believe clearly that the uh, cumulative substantial improvement flood proofing concept would not achieve the goal and would cause the various damages, disinvestment, and the process of decline in quality and character and condition of properties. It's very that simple. I do want to say just simply one thing which is just a note of acknowledgement and appreciation. This has been <clears throat> a very positive and a very um, impressive process. From the very beginning, from the first meeting that I attended, with the <clears throat> voluntary um, non-required invitation to the public to hear what was to be said, to the communication with the staff members, to the communication with any elected officials. And there's been absolutely nothing but a, an openness and a receptiveness and I think really a positive dialogue. And I just wanted to acknowledge that and thank you for it. It's, it's, it's been um, very much appreciated. Well thank, well, thank you, Mr. Holtzman. And thank you to the audience <clears throat> that's here tonight. Uh, send out a little bit from the last two meetings, but certainly we appreciate uh, your participation and, and your thoughts on this issue. They've greatly informed myself and the commission. Uh, and I want to thank the commission members, frankly. They have, all of the commission members have done their independent research on this issue. We've engaged in thorough debate. We've identified the pros and cons of this issue, and I think we've arrived at, at a consensus. Uh, maybe not a unanimous consensus, but a consensus all the same. So we have a motion and a second on the floor to approve all of the definitions in question except for uh, the definitions of substantial damage and substantial improvement. Is there any further discussion? Roll call. Yes, Mr. McDonald. Just a, a clarification. So are we voting on, we're just voting on number one right now. Which Correct. doesn't even address the cumulative. Correct. Okay. Roll call, please. Rich Obertino. Yes. Jake McDonald. Yes. John Nervera is yes. Clint Lewis. Yes. Dan Klauski? Yes. Denver Hansen? Yes. David Divin? Yes. David Plotka? Yes. Motion passes, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Nuremberger. Now, the next item on the agenda is to also approve the optional changes, which are the definitions of substantial damage and substantial improvement that have been proposed uh, and that we so thoroughly debated the last several months. <clears throat> Are there any further commission members that would like to address any thoughts on that, on those optional definitions? Okay. Seeing none, is there any member of the audience that would like to address the commission, taking into account the backdrop? Okay, very good. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Klauski. I'll make a motion only so that I can vote against it. <laughs> <laughs> Move for adoption of uh, the petition for approval of the amendment item uh, two on the agenda. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the optional definitions. Any further discussion? Roll call. 
Rich Obertino? No. Jake McDonald? No. John Nurmer is no. Clint Lewis? No. David Plefka? No. David Demet? Yes. Jennifer Hansen? No. Dan Glosky? No. Moses fails, Mr. Jim. <coughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Nuremberger. Okay, is everybody clear then? We, so the commission has passed the, all the definitions except for the two optional definitions, and that will then go to the Board of Aldermen and only require a majority to approve the that is definitions that have been passed and a supermajority to approve the optional definitions. That is correct. Very good. Thank you to all of you for coming the last several meetings. Okay. Next item on the agenda is a petition for approval of an amendment to Chapter 19 of the Municipal Code of the City of Brentwood pertaining to sign regulations. You may recall we've had this on the agenda now. Oh, I think we started discussing it at the last meeting. Uh, this amounts to, frankly, to a complete overhaul of the entire sign code. <coughs> and I know there were several commissioners that, that spoke to me and indicated they had not had an opportunity to give this the attention that it deserves. Uh, I'd suggest that we just need to buckle down at a subcommittee meeting and just go through this definition by revision by re revision. Uh, so we have a subcommittee meeting. When is the next subcommittee meeting, Mr. Wise? May 28th. May 28th. So if someone on the commission is unable to make that subcommittee meeting, I'd love to hear from you tonight. Uh, but otherwise, I'm hoping that most, if not all of you, can come and be prepared and we'll just buckle down and, and go through this and we'll overhaul our sign code. Anybody have an objection to that? Okay. Very good. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion to table this item. So I'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. <coughs> On a new business, the first item is a petition for site plan and conditional use permit approval to locate a concierge auto sale use located at 1439 Strassner Road. Petitioner Steve Lander. Is Mr. Lander or his representative here? Yes, Please step forward, sir. If you could introduce yourself, and I think the commission's had an opportunity to look at your petition, but just briefly walk through it for a little bit of background. Sure. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the commission for considering my application for a conditional use permit. Uh, my name is Steve Lander, and uh, I'm the owner of uh, two existing businesses in Brentwood, Lander Binding and Finishing and Balls and Strikes. Um, uh, my proposal is to uh, have a concierge automobile sales uh, located within the existing uh, building and an existing office at Lander Binding. And uh, I plan on having uh, no inventory whatsoever. I will only purchase a vehicle once I have a, a, a buyer for that vehicle. And uh, most, if not all, the vehicles will be purchased through an auction. And uh, most will be late model with uh, manufacturer's warranty still left. And I plan on doing this on a very small scale, starting out first with uh, friends, relatives, and just by word of mouth. And it's kind of been a, a hobby for mine for years and years, just on an individual basis. And uh, I have a little bit extra time during the day, so I decided to uh, give this a try. Okay, very good. Uh, Mr. Wise, is this, how similar is this to the approval that the commission took up and considered a few months ago uh, for the business over in Brentwood? It, it's an identical proposal, um, and, and staff has talked with the applicant about it. Uh, we pulled the, the conditions that the commission had, had recommended and ultimately the board approved from uh, that petition, presented it, we discussed it. Um, Mr. Lander, the only objection that he said, uh, the previous um, approval had a, a condition that there was no external signage. He has indicated that, you know, for his, his licensing purposing with the state, that he would like to have some small signage on the door or something to just signify that it's a separate bona fide use, I, I believe is the language that's in the application. Um, but, but he has agreed to the conditions that there are no signage on any of the vehicles within the lot that would advertise that any vehicle is for sale. 
Uh, the vehicle inventory or storage is not placed in a manner in a manner that would prevent safe circulation or impede emergency service provider access. That no vehicle associated with this use shall be in the parking lot for more than 30 days, and no more than three vehicles associated with this use shall be on the lot at any time. And again, those were the conditions that the commission recommended with the prior approval that was reviewed in, I believe, December of 2013. Those conditions are acceptable to you, Mr. Lander? Yes, they are. Okay, very good. All right, questions from commission members? Yes. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Albertino. A point of clarification on the, the last condition, <coughs> no more than three vehicles associated with the use. As I read that definition, <coughs> I can look to the other side of my attorneys. That means your vehicle or anybody that works for you can't have their vehicle parked on the lot. It may want to be clarified that no vehicles for sale associated with this use as opposed to employee vehicles. It's a small issue, but I think it's a point of clarification. Thoughts, Mr. Wise? I think that would be more than appropriate and help with the administration, quite frankly, of yeah. the restriction. That's that, that would be helpful, especially if a customer comes uh, that they would be using one of those three spots. Okay, right. so you'd like to amend your petition to reflect that change? Yes, please. Okay, so amended. Further discussion from the commission? Any audience members like to address the commission on this petition? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion. I'll move to approve Mr. Chairman, as note as revised. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Rich Obertino? Yes. Jake McDonald? Yes. Clint Lewis? Yes. John Nurmberger is yes. Dan Glossy? Yes. Jennifer Hansen? Yes. David Dimmitt? Yes. David Plucka? Yes. Motion passes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Lander, and thank, thank you, you for your corporate <clears throat> citizenship. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a petition for approval of an amended site plan for Bonefish Grill, located at 87 Eager, 8700 <coughs> Eager Road. And I, we know the petitioner well, so step forward, Ms. Abernathy. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Abernathy. I'm here representing Bonefish Grill. And as you may recall, when I was here last, um, this is a new design for Bonefish Grill. And as we uh, constructed the first of these designs, we ran into a few uh, what I'll call translation issues between what our innovation team had designed and what we could actually construct. So that brings me here tonight because there are a couple of um, items that we needed to uh, provide an alternative uh, material or uh, design in order to uh, be able to construct. And I do have some photos of this, the other bonefish that was constructed, which I think are very helpful. I don't know if it's best to put them on the overhead or maybe just pass them around, whatever is your pleasure. I also have a material board that we could pass around. Okay, why don't we pass everything around? Okay. So I'm going to hand you these, and, and they're a good uh, reflection generally of our, what our design Thanks, Thanks, Justin. <coughs> is going to look like. So there's basically three elements that we're modifying. The first is our original design along the patio were copper uh, colored metal planters. And there was an issue with our first store with supply. There were one uh, supplier out of Vietnam that was not able to supply an adequate uh, number of those planters. So we needed to replace those with a more traditional type of railing and it will be a canvas material. It is on that material board that is going around. It's a black canvas. And you will see from the photos, you'll get a sense of, a uh, better sense of what that design looks like. So that's the, uh, all, all along the patio, which is along Brentwood Boulevard. Um, so that's our, our first uh, modification. And we will have quite a bit of uh, landscaping along the base of that that will uh, also provide some color um, and 
contrast to that black uh, canvas material. The next item that we are modifying is originally at one end of the patio, we had a fireplace feature and a, a solid wall. Um, when we got into the design, we uh, had to modify for ADA compliance. There needed to be a second means of egress and we needed to provide a sidewalk through that area, so we, need, we cut the, uh, that wall back. There is still a wall feature. It, it, it'll look similar to these photos that are coming around. Um, a wood wall that it, it takes up about the middle two-thirds of that, of that end of the patio, and that is the uh, south end um, of the patio. And originally, and you'll see in the photos, we had designed a fireplace feature, but it, I don't think it translated well, and you'll kind of see that in the photograph. I don't think it had the design impact that was envisioned and really didn't um, add a lot of architectural interest or uh, ambiance to, to the patio, so that was removed. And we did in the front, this is the last item, and our front tower feature, and, and that's, this is not in the photos because this is another new design feature, we added a uh, display window. I mean, it's a full window. You'll be able to see all the way through to the hostess station, and in that window, there'll be um, wine displayed because that's a big part of our, um, our uh, menu, if you will, is, is our, our, our wine options and our wines by the glass. So those are the three main items that were modified from the original design. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the, in the last item, the original design we had on the north and uh, east walls of the building, there was a perimeter planter um, that was a, a masonry uh, planter, you know, attached to the building. And again, there's some practical difficulties with building that. In so it was decided to remove that planter and just do plantings along the base of the building instead. And that helps to keep that moisture away from the base of the building. And it's a little more practical for maintenance in the long run. So that was the third element that changed. I do have a copy of the original elevations if anybody wants to you know, put them side by side to, to see the differences. Um, and I'm open for you know, specific questions if anybody has any okay. Thank about you. the changes. Mr. Wise, staff report. Uh, staff doesn't have a, a whole lot of comments on this one. Um, we've reviewed the changes. They're, I think, by and large, very minor changes. Um, the, the one <clears> element <throat> that, that did cause us to look at it a little bit more was the commission had made a recommendation previously that some of the, the landscaping and the planters be wrapped around some of the building. They've incorporated that same design concept in with their landscaping that they've brought around. So staff has no issues with the proposed changes. And nor do I. These changes seem innocuous and uh, I think maintain the direction that the commission went in the original application. But are there any commissioners that would like to address the applicant? Okay. Any members of the audience would like to address the commission on this petition? <clears throat> All right. Chair, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> to approve this as submitted. I don't think there's any uh, other changes that are needed. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Bridge Obertino? Yes. Jake McDonald? Yes. Clint Lewis? Yes. John Number is yes. Dan Glowski? Yes. Jennifer Hansen? Yes. David Dimmitt? Yes. David Plefka? Yes. Moments and passions, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am happy to announce that we are under construction on schedule. Opening is October 20th. And as a reminder, we have our charity <coughs> night that should be October 17th. Um, which I invite everybody to attend. It's uh, generally $35, and you get to try everything on the menu, and 100% of the prote proceeds will go to a local charity. So Great. looking forward to seeing all of you at our opening. Thank you. Welcome what to the you community. Send out a reminder, <laughs> please. Yeah. I'll send an email to Justin. There. there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Very good. And Mr. Wise, can you get with Ms. Abernathy as to the next step? 
Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll touch base with you tomorrow, probably. Don't leave it that. Okay, Aldermanic report. I see an Alder woman back there. Would you like to address the commission? There's two. There are. Okay. Are you writing good meeting? Thank you, Alderwoman Saunders. City Planner's report? No report. Subcommittee. We got this sign code to take up. Let's get those hands up. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. We got a quorum for it. May 28th, 7 o'clock. Rationale, Mr. Wise, can you handle? Yes. Any other business? Mr. It, Chairman? Yeah, Mr. Plufka. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to note uh, with some pleasure that on April 21st, uh, the City of Richmond Heights unanimously approved Boys Hope, Girls Hope's application to relocate its uh, consolidated um, uh, buildings or building within that city. Um, anybody that followed the process through Brentwood last summer um, knows that it was a it was a it was a it was a thoughtful process, um, and it was ultimately, in my personal opinion, um, a, a disappointing process. But it was nonetheless, I thought. Um, difficult from everybody's perspective. I just wanted to note with some satisfaction that uh, that great organization is going to be able to consolidate their um, their footprint, if you will, and extend uh, that charity's reach to even a greater number of deserving young men and women. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Plufka. Anybody else have any other business? Mr. Demet. I just have a quick question. Hopefully it's a quick question, Mr. Chairman. It's going back to the first two items that are on tonight's agenda, um, as you remember back in, in April, uh, if memory serves, for that motion concerning the amendment to the text, uh, I believe Sherry made the motion, I seconded it, and then I think Jennifer uh, amended the motion. A vote was taken, and it ended up with, I guess, a negative recommendation to the Board of Aldermen. At the subsequent Board of Aldermen meeting, it was not taken up as a negative recommendation. It, it, it's, if I understand, I was watching the meeting, it looked like it was submitted in two separate bills instead of just one bill. And I was just wondering some explanation as to why that was done. Because it seemed to, con to create some confusion at the aldermanic level. Some people could look at that and make it look as though put us in a bad light that we had done something wrong uh, and that we had, I don't know, a positive recommend recommendation on one and a negative on the other when there was only one vote taken. Okay. I'm just trying to get some clarification as sure. to what, how we go from one negative recommendation to two separate bills at the aldermanic right. level. And, and that was, a, <clears throat> a, a, I guess, a proposal that was put through staff given the consequences of, of what the proposal entailed to make sure that everyone was clear on exactly the two portions that were contained within the text. Um, and, and that's why it was taken forward that way. And that's why the board ultimately uh, sent it back to the commission was to clarify that intention. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other? Yes, Alderman Saunders. It shouldn't have been brought forward to Okay. Okay, for the record, Alderwoman Saunders has <coughs> indicated that she believes it should have been brought forward the way the commission addressed it. Okay. Any other business? Chair, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, we stand adjourned. <laughs>